Oh, how many of you are familiar with Trevor Bauer? How many of you have heard that name before? Those of you that are sports enthusiasts that are into sports, you you probably are more than likely, especially if you're into uh, baseball, you're probably familiar with, with his name and all that. For those of you that are not familiar with Trevor Bauer, let me give you a quick little recap of what's going on here. He was a professional Major League Baseball player, pitcher, I believe. And in 2021, a woman alleged that he did some bad things to her. That involved touching and doing things and you know without consent. You see where I'm going at with this, right? And as a result of that, as is the case in the current climate, which I have a fundamental problem with, where social media gets a hold of it and they judge you off of what an allegation is. Uh, he was kind of canceled, and Major League Baseball suspended him for like 194 games. That's that's an entire season. I believe major league baseball season is like 130 games. I could be wrong. Somebody can uh, fact check me in the, in the, in the chat. So he gets as the case is any kind of allegation that involves uh essay and all that stuff, you know, uh, you get all the way out of here. You're done. So that happens to him today. We get an update from Trevor Bauer himself. They were going to watch in this video and at the end of this video, if you are not outraged, and I do not care, this shouldn't be an issue along gender lines. As a human being, you should feel really mad about what what's about to happen here. I did see this already, but I had to bring it back to share with you to discuss this problem. He's gonna recap everything that's happened because that situation has now been resolved. So let's go ahead and play this video and take a look. Next victim, star pitcher for the Dodgers. A text Lindsay Hill sent to a friend before she ever even met me. What should I steal? She asked another in reference to visiting my house for the first time. The answer? Take his money. So how might that work? I'm going to his house Wednesday, she said. I already have my hooks in. You know how I roll. Then, after the first time we met, net worth is 51 mil, she said. How is she pocket watching so hard to know how much money he has? Or at least, I mean, it is public information. These athletes have their contracts out there. It is, you know, public knowledge. But still. Bitch, you better secure the bag, was the response. Uh, but, but how is she going to do that? Need daddy to choke me out, she said. Being an absolute whore to try to get in on his 51 million. Read another text. That text right there is a great... <laughs> a perfect kind of representation of a portion. Let me be clear here. A portion of subset of, of women that prey and hunt on wealthy men to secure the bag. I, I, I promise you this ain't new either. I mean, this is, this has been a thing. It's only been in recent, maybe like since 2020 when now we have terms for everything, but I promise you this has been around for the longest time ever. You know what I'm saying? This idea of, um, this subset of women that will by any means necessary go out there to lock down a guy to benefit off of what he has. And, and the statement right here, you know what I mean? Clear as day, clear as day. She down, she going to do whatever she can to secure the bag. Then after the second time we met former Padres pitcher, Jacob Nix told her, you got to get this bag. I'll give you 50,000. Lindsay replied. Her AA sponsor asked her at one point, do you feel a tiny bit guilty? Not really, she replied. Since then, her legal team has approached me multiple times about coming to a financial settlement. But as I have done since day one, I refuse to pay her even a single cent. You drop a bomb for the guy. Drop a bomb. All this is already coming to him for a settlement is ex it's, it's legal extortion, bro. It is legal extortion. It really is legal extortion. Thank you for the hearts, man. It's legal extortion and it's so bad, right? Especially when the person that has the allegations against them hasn't actually done that. Now they're just trying to get you to fold, get the money and keep it moving. It's extortion legally. Uh, in August of 2021, Lindsay Hill's claims were heard in court. And during those legal proceedings, critical information was deliberately and unlawfully concealed from me and my legal team. Uh, information like this video, which was taken by Lindsay Hill herself the morning after she claimed she was brutally attacked, emotionally traumatized, and desperate to get away from me. Wow. Uh, and now we have the metadata, so there can be no... Hey, yo, this is a whole level of, of, of evil 
How you just go up, first of all, you, like you taking pictures, like this whole thing of being in bed with someone and taking photos of them knocked out, you know what I mean? Is so wrong. It's so wrong. Dispute. Uh, it was taken mere minutes before she left my house on the morning of May 16th, 2021, without my knowledge or consent, of course. Uh, in it, you can see her lying in bed next to me while I'm sleeping, smirking at the camera without a care in the world or any marks on her face. I think it paints a pretty clear picture of what actually happened the evening of May 15th and why the video was originally concealed from us. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, after hearing the evidence available to her, Judge Diana Gold Saltman found that Lindsay Hill had misled the court. She Bam. found her claims to be materially misleading. Bam. Uh, she denied her request for a domestic violence restraining order, and she found that no sexual assault or non-consensual conduct took place. Now, some of you might not know about restraining order hearings. I know I didn't, but uh, I've since learned that uh, it's extremely rare for a request for a restraining order to be denied because the standard of proof that you need to obtain one is extremely low. So you can make of that what you will. So, right, just to kind of expand on that, it's pretty easy to get a restraining order and all that stuff. So he's saying here, the fact that that got denied further speaks to how full of it that that woman was in this whole accusation. It was that bad on top of them withholding video, withholding evidence. This was, oh, there's so many levels to how bad and how wrong all of this played out. The fact is I was never arrested. I was never charged with a crime and I won the only legal proceeding that took place without my side of the story even being heard. And remember major league baseball just off the premise of the allegation coming out suspended him for over 190 games just off of the allegation it's so bad in today's times where allegations can take you out regardless of whether or not you are found guilty and to me that is problematic you know what i mean uh, and most importantly as i've said from day one i never sexually assaulted lindsey hill or anyone else for that matter uh, so i sued her which prompted her to counter sue me there you go. Quite frankly, regardless of the outcome in court, I've paid significantly more in legal fees of than course. Lindsay Hill could ever pay me in her entire life. <laughs> the subtle jab. The, the subtle jab. And it's true. He's he's he lose he has lost at every level of this ordeal. And he can never get it back. All predicated on a lie. Y'all hear me? all predicated on a lie. Uh, and I knew that would be the case going in, but the lawsuit was never about the money for me. It was the only way for me to obtain critical information to clear my name. Uh, the discovery process in that lawsuit recently concluded, at which point uh, Lindsay Hill's legal team again came to us with another proposal to resolve the case. Uh, this time, however, they weren't seeking any money from me. Oh, is that right? Having received uh, much of the information that had been hidden from us, uh, a small portion, of which I've referenced here, um, I was willing to agree to the terms proposed. Both parties would drop their respective lawsuits and neither of us would pay either side any money. Um, I also retained my right to speak publicly about the case, something Good. I have not been at liberty to do since June of 2021. Good. So as of today, both lawsuits have been settled. Now, over the last two years, I've been forced to defend my integrity uh, and my reputation in a very public setting. But hopefully this is the last time I have to do so, as I'd prefer to just remain focused on doing my job, uh, winning baseball games and entertaining fans around the world. So today I'm happy to be moving on with my life. So that is where we're at with this entire story with Trevor Bauer right here. And the bigger issue here is the fact that at this point, there seems to be no repercussions for what that woman did to destroy his life off of a lie. And there's not enough out there in the justice system to hold people, anyone that makes false allegations accountable for this stuff. I would argue, brace yourself here, that when it comes to acts of uh, sexual violence against someone, as traumatizing, as bad as it is and how it can destroy your life and, and can tr completely transform your life in a whole different way after you've been a victim of that, that an individual that has been accused of 
something to that degree, it's the it's one and the same. It is just as detrimental. It is just as egregious. It is just as life altering for someone to have a claim laid falsely that they did something like that. And because of this, there needs to be repercussions. People should go to jail if they make a false allegation of a sexual crime for the period of time that the person would have, if they did in fact do it, would have gone for under federal statutes or, or state statutes, whatever. Because right now, she was able to do all of this, disrupt him. From my understanding, he's still not in the MLB. I think he's playing overseas. He's had to play overseas just to have his career, to have some kind of income. He's lost all kinds of money. It tarnished his name, uh, all the expenses, the legal expenses that costed him. And for her, let's keep it a buck. She didn't pay her lawyers. They took up the case thinking, oh, this is a slam dunk. We're going to do a pro bono because we're just going to get our money on the back end, right? And I presume, just from how he described all this with information being withheld, that the lawyers, the second time around, once they discovered that, oh, no, there's stuff that, yeah, this is very, uh, uh, this is not good for us. That's probably why they came hat in hand to the table to say, you know what, let's just let's just dismiss this charge. Let's just dismiss it all, and move on, because they knew, like, yeah, we got nothing here. This actually, now we know she's lying to us. Like, we're we're caught up in this. What's interesting here too is that Elon uh, tweeted to his uh, reply to him in a tweet, where her lawyers aware that she withheld evidence. To which Trevor says, it appears her lawyers had the evidence the entire time, which is. So bad, bro. I, I don't even know if there's any kind of legal ramifications for a lawyer to knowingly withhold evidence. That's a, it has to be a big no-no. I'm not a lawyer, but I just off general general knowledge here has to be something really bad about doing that. You know what I'm saying? Um, as we continue on here, speaking specifically about the whole video of her laying in bed next to me with no marks on her face the morning after she claims I brutally attacked her, an email containing that video was sent to her attorney, Brian Friedman, before the DVRO hearing in 2021, and it was never turned over to us. They didn't make that discovery available. Again, that has to be in violation of ethical lawyer code or whatever. That's, that's crazy. Um, perhaps that's... That's why he's insisted on adding his name to the released party section in the settlement agreement. There it is right there. They knew the lawyers for her knew that they messed up and they wanted to settle this and made it a point, right? They made it a point to include themselves in the section that releases them from, from any kind of, um, uh, further ongoing legal action, right? They threw themselves in there too, to be re released just as much as she was. Um, there was also a 12 day span of text between Lindsay and two of her closest friends immediately following the incident that were deleted. We asked for them in discovery for the DVRO. They, uh, they weren't turned over again, more withholding of evidence. We also argue that they must be turned over in the DVR proceeding. They were not Lindsay Hills, other law firm, Meyer Olson Lowry and Myers LLP who co-represented her through that court process had them the whole time. When I tell you that this man literally have had to have went through hell for this time period, not only did he have to face the false allegations, not only did it tarnish his and, and destroy his major league baseball career off of the lie, not only did it cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees, uh, perhaps, right? It's very expensive. Whatever it is, is expensive. Um, but he ended up coming out of this with no recourse other than being able to speak on this publicly. And that seems for him to have been the only thing that was of value to get out of this that he felt would make it worthwhile to just move on that at least he can have a chance to clear his name and move on. And it's sad, bro. It's sad that you have situations of false allegations typically made, generally speaking here, by women against men to either uh, extort them or um, be vindictive, and many different reasons, right? 
The problem is, is that there's no recourse for those liars. There's no recourse. If it was the other way around and, you know, things happened as the way they said they happened and he never got prosecuted and got, you know, got off free, there'd be an uproar on social media. Everyone would be pressed. He got away. He did it. Oh, poor her. There's not nearly enough outcrying of people s saying the same thing in, in essence about her, that how did she get away with this? She needs to be held accountable. She needs to go to jail, something to that effect. For her, life goes on, right? It might be a little bit different for her online, but here's the thing. She can live her life offline and she'll probably be fine for the most part. She really didn't lose anything at, at all in this, other than just looking like a, look, look other than looking like this, Right, that's her. That's that's the woman, right there, that destroyed the man's life. And for me, I'm so sick. And it seems to be re occurring more and more. Perhaps it's maybe just that it's showing up more and more. Perhaps is that we're more aware of these things happening. But this shit has to stop. And the only way it's going to stop is when these motherfuckers get locked up for lying, for destroying people's lives, just as much as when somebody commits a crime, a sexual crime against someone, they destroy someone's life and they go to jail. This is no different. This is no different. And when I saw this today, when I tell y'all, I was so heated about this and you better believe I'm going to be looking up to see if there's anything going to come. I, I, I think because he signed that agreement to dismiss the charges that he can't pursue anything outside of this, but one would hope that maybe the authorities in whatever uh, place, I'm guessing this is California where this was filed, look at this and say, you know what, you, you abused the system here. Like, you know, you really tried to take someone out for no valid reason that they go after her, bro. The sad part is, is it's probably not. She's a continue to wreak havoc and God forbid, and hopefully guys see this face right here. And, and run for the hills if they come across her because it is a very bad time to be a man. And don't think, by the way, let's be clear here. It, this, this isn't only happening to men that have millions of dollars. This is all relative. This is all relative. You could be a guy that's doing well for yourself, 70, 80, 90K, 100K, whatever. You got, you got motion. You got something going for yourself. You meet the wrong woman that, that's vindictive. You break up with her. She wants to go after you just out of spite. This can happen to the average guy, bro. It can happen to the average guy. This is why this is problematic. It sets the tone and, and allows people to continue this behavior to be like, oh, I'm going to ruin them. I'm going to ruin them. I'm just going to say they did this to me. And, and you lose everything. I don't know about y'all, man, but if this doesn't get you fired up and mad, I don't know what else would. This is terrible, man. And I'm glad that Trevor has been able to at least share this. So now we know that she was a fucking liar and 100% deserves to be locked up in jail for a period of time for that. Because.